How did we go from this to this? Wow. Or, well, at least this. Stay tuned to find out. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Angela Puka and welcome to my symposium. I'm a PhD and a university lecturer and this is your online resource for the academic study of magic, witchcraft and all things esoteric. In this video we will talk about the romanticizing of Satan and how that evolved from the conceptualization of him as the arch enemy of God which is, by the way, not found in the Hebrew Bible, but in the New Testament, if we are to endorse the collision between Satan and the devil. But this, along with the history of the worship of Satan, may be topics for future videos. In fact, leave me a line in the comment section and let me know if you'd like me to cover these areas. Now we are going to discuss how Satan became a romantic hero for poets, artists, and how that played a role in the rise of modern religious Satanism. My source for this video is going to be Children of Lucifer by Ruben van Lauk, published by Oxford University Press. Yet, you are welcome to recommend and pursue the investigation of other academic sources. As my long-time viewers know, I always encourage your independent research and to see my videos as appetizers rather than the truth on the matter. Research is always ongoing and it's more important to master the skills to find and critically evaluate reliable sources rather than clinging onto information as truth, as they might and will likely be obsolete in 50 years, sometimes in five years. Right, premises out of the way. Let's move on to the topic now. According to Van Lauk, Satanism is an invention of Christianity, as it was within the context of a Christian religion and of a society shaped by Christianity that the idea of Satanism first arose. Christianity played, in fact, a central role in the proliferation of the concept of Satan as the devil, as well as Lucifer lumping together different and diverging adversarial roles and depictions found across the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament. After all, if we define Satanism as the intentional religious veneration of Satan, it follows that there can be no Satanism without a Satan. Another element that played a significant role in the conceptualization and imagery of Satan was the demonizing of pagan gods and of their worship. The well-known image of the devil as goat-footed and horned is reminiscent of the Greek god Pan and of the Fauni and the Silvani of the Roman forests. In other parts of Europe, the devil has assimilated traits of native gods from other traditions. For instance, in a late medieval Dutch miracle play, he appears as a one-eyed Mona, quite resembling the Nordic god Odin, whose worship had already been abandoned for centuries. But when and how did Satan start to be seen as this heroic figure? instead of the embodiment of godless evil? Well, that happened after the Enlightenment and during the Romantic era. As Van Lauk highlights, there were two main cultural changes that fostered this reshaped idea of Satan. And these are secularization and revolution. The demise of the literal belief in Satan brought about by a more secular society was an essential prerequisite for the emergence of the romantic Satan. Those who endorsed this poetic view of the devil didn't quite believe in the existence of a real Lucifer, just as they didn't espouse the reality of the Christian God. This transition led to abandoning the perception that Satan constituted an actual threat and allowed cultural space 
for reimagining its mythic role and its possible relatability to our human condition. And what appeared to be domineering during the Romantic era, if not rebellion against the status quo in the form of revolutions, as Satan's fall started to be associated with proud unlawful insurrection against divine authority, that appeared to mirror quite nicely that sense of popular and political insurrection against oppressing monarchs and the subjugating systems of government of the time. Giving new meaning to his role in the grand scheme of things, the Romantic Satanists transformed the fallen angel into a noble champion of political and individual freedom against a supreme power that deprives people of their agency, leaving submission as the only option. From the 19th century onwards, the romanticized perception of Satan has been linked to three key elements – sex and sexual liberation, science and reason, individual freedom and agency. These elements, perceived as adversarial stances to the Christian morality, have fostered the birth of both the atheistic and theistic Satanisms. Satan, in his aspect of Lucifer, the light bringer, now works against the dogmatism of religion and, as a fallen one, he got associated with earth, nature and the flesh, particularly in its manifestations of passionate love and sex. This sexually charged representation was also informed by the Book of the Watchers in First Enoch, which embeds the lust of the fallen angels for the daughters of men in its narrative. Von Lauck argues that there are three crucial ways in which Romantic Satanism contributed to the late rise of modern religious Satanism. For once, they mark the first historical appearance in Western civilization of an influential cultural current that positively re-evaluated Satan. Second, they show a new post-Christian and post-Enlightenment way of dealing with myth and meaning. This allowed for a resurrection and a reconstruction of Satan as a cosmic symbol with which modern people could sympathize and even identify. Third, Romantic Satanism exerted a decisive influence on the shape of the rehabilitated Satan that would continue to haunt 19th century counterculture and eventually emerge in modern religious Satanism. So, this is it for today's video. Please, if you like my content and want me to keep the academic fun going, consider supporting my work with one-off donations on PayPal by joining memberships or my inner symposium on Patreon, where you will get access to lots of perks depending on your chosen tier. And if you did like this video, don't forget to smash the like button, share the video with your friends, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and activate the notification bell, because YouTube is naughty and might not let you know when there is a new upload from me. So, thank you so much for being here, and stay tuned for all the academic fun. Bye for now!